I'd like to call the meeting of the Urbana City Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Ammons? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Jacobson? Here. Mr. Madigan? Here. Ms. Marlin? Mr. Roberts? Mr. Smythe? Here. Mayor Pressing? Here. The first item is approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. We have two, September 8th, 2014, and September 15th, 2014. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. <coughs> motion by Ammons, seconded by Smythe. Any additions or corrections? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Are there any additions to the agenda? A small correction. Yes. Uh, item A, mayoral appointments. B, the, I think the date of uh, the third appointment under B it should say 6-30-17. That matches the cover memo. I, I don't know. It may be um, an unexpired term. Libby, uh, do six, you know? Six thirty fourteen has already gone by. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> duh. I stand corrected even though I'm term. sitting down. Okay. Uh, do, is the date 17 or is it some other date? Um, 17 is what in, what's in your memo. Okay. Well, if it's in my memo, it must be correct. Okay. We'll change that to say 17. Okay. Anything else? Uh, petitions and communications. I would like to uh, start by reading a proclamation. Whereas hundreds of children's lives could be saved each year if communities make pedestrian safety a priority, and whereas a lack of physical activity is contributing to the rising rates of obesity, diabetes, and other health problems among children, and whereas driving students to school by private vehicle contributes to traffic congestion and air pollution, and whereas parents and caregivers can teach children about pedestrian safety and become aware of the difficulties and dangers that children face on their trip to school each day, and whereas community members and leaders can plan to make immediate changes to enable children to safely walk and bicycle in our communities, and whereas children, parents, schools, and community leaders around the world will be walking to school and raising awareness about walking and bicycling conditions in their communities. Now, therefore, I, Laurel Lunt Pressing, Mayor of the City of Urbana, do hereby proclaim October 8th, 2014, as International Walk and Roll to School Day and encourage everyone to consider the safety and health of children today and every day. And we have um, a representative from the event to talk to us. Go ahead, Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia Hoyle. Thank you so much for uh, doing the proclamation tonight during your meeting, and I want to thank those of you who have already uh, let us know that you are going to be joining us on Wednesday. We appreciate your support. It means a lot to the uh, kids when elected officials come and walk with them. And one of the reasons I like this event is because when you walk with the children, uh, the perspective you get is very different than when you drive the same routes. And so having uh, you out there with them on the ground experiencing what they do uh, really makes a difference. And thank you for your support. Any questions for Cynthia? What time are you all starting the meetup? Different schools have different uh, times that they start, but they usually gather about uh, 10 till 8. And as you, because you've done this before, mm -hmm. they, uh, most of the schools have the buses drop students so that they can all participate. And this year, uh, we have events planned at almost all of the schools, and so we're, we're very excited about that. We're also going to be uh, using one of the routes uh, for the walking school bus at Lille that is going to be a park and walk. We're trying to encourage parents to park at uh, a designated location and uh, either walk with their children or, leave, or have their children walk with the walking school bus the two blocks to Lille. And uh, that's a program that we've been working on and piloting and are expanding to uh, Prairie this fall, too. Thank you. Okay, I'll give you the proclamation. Thanks. I did invite a representative from CU Schools Foundation. Uh, would you like to come up now and introduce yourself? Hello. Hi. 
I'm Molly Delaney, and I'm uh, very happy to be here and thank uh, Mayor Pressing for inviting me this evening. I actually was in her office earlier today, and I arrived there because we are inviting all of the city council and the city government of Urbana to put a team together to participate in the third annual Champaign-Urbana Schools Foundation Spelling Bee. So we would love you to come out and support this event. Uh, you don't have to be a fantastic speller to, to compete on a team. And we also, as a little caveat, we want to let you know that we're also challenging um, the Champaign City Council and uh, the, the Mayor of Savoy as well. Um, so I'm here obviously to get your attention and to let you know uh, that we're having this fundraiser and that we are very proud to be supporting the Urbana School District um, with the work that we do. That's November 8th? Yes. Okay. Any questions for the, our busy bee? Please, please no spelling questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. If there's anyone else who would like to address the Urbana City Council, you could fill out one of these little cards and give it to the clerk, Phyllis Clark. I do have one from uh, Bishop K uh, King James and um, Evelyn B. Underwood, and Reverend Evelyn B. Underwood, and they do not wish to testify, but for the record, they're still concerned about the Dr. Ellis subdivision sewer problems. So, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, the next item is um, unfinished business. I don't think we have any that we're gonna deal with. Um, reports of standing committees, the Committee of the Whole. Who did the Committee of the Whole? Charlie, okay. <clears throat> Two items from the Committee of the Hall here. Uh, ordinance number 2014-990, an ordinance amending the zoning map of the City of Urbana, Illinois, adjusting the boundaries of the Boneyard Creek Overlay District, plan case 2239-M14 for the committee I so move. Second. <laughs> Motion by Smythe, <coughs> second by Ammons. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Ms. Ammons? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. That motion carries. Okay, next up is resolution 2014-948R, resolution approving an agreement for a reimbursable utility adjustment with Ameren, Illinois <coughs> Company doing business as Ameren, Illinois. This is the Olympian Drive improvement at Duncan Road. For the committee, I so move. Second. Motion by Smythe, seconded by Jacobson. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Hammonds? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Smart? <coughs> yes. That motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. We'll move on. Reports of special committees. I don't believe we have any. Reports of officers. Anyone like to address the city council? Brandon Boyce, Economic Development Director to be. Thank you. I'm going to go over the highlights of the uh, economic development uh, activities report for the month of September. There was a lot of activity in downtown Urbana. Sorry, this chair. <laughs> um, we are now um, in the midst of the expansion for applied pavement technology, which is going to add 16 new engineering positions. This is a corporate headquarters that's located right in our downtown that a lot of folks might not realize. They have offices in multiple states around the country, so it's pretty exciting um, that, that they're, they're growing right here in downtown. There are 10 new tech employees who I believe have started um, on the second floor of County Plaza. Runtime verification, it is a startup that grew out of a professor's research, Grigor Rosu, um, in the computer science program at UIUC. Uh, they, I think they had offices in Champaign and are, are relocating at this time, but it's exciting to have them. They certainly have a lot of growth potential. Um, 204 West Main Street, um, cake design development. Demolition work is underway. You might not know from Main Street, but if you were to go around into the alley, you'll see that about half the building is down and they're moving forward with the structural supports needed to make sure that uh, the surrounding buildings are maintained and the facade is also um, 
maintained as, as they proceed with that <coughs> demolition that's going to result in a beer garden um, and kind of a market space where it might even host a food truck. Dancing Dog Eatery and Juicery announced on Facebook just a couple days ago that they received their um, approval from the Public Health District, so they should be open in a matter of days at this point. So that's been a long time coming. They um, funded the creation of a new commercial kitchen in a space in our downtown, uh, right on Main Street, that has not had a, a commercial kitchen to date. So that's a pretty uh, major project. Um, and we'll, the, their presence will be a great benefit to downtown. More, more food. And, and, and other related food news, um, the space formerly occupied by the Urbana Butcher Shop, 119 West Main Street, is now going to be home to a new barbecue um, restaurant called Lord & Lacey. And they've been doing catering for some time, I understand. So um, we are soon going to be the, a bar we're going to have a barbecue district, I think. In downtown and up along Cunningham Avenue, yeah. Um, one other new addition to downtown, Miras Technologies, um, which was a longtime uh, computer repair and IT service provider who worked out of his home, I think, for over a decade, has now opened his first um, storefront, and he's doing that in downtown. It's in the same space at 123 West Main uh, that's occupied by Era Records and the Farm League Skate Shop. Uh, so, again, things continue. A lot's still happening in downtown. Um, down at the Pines, um, they are in the process of remodeling for a new AT&T cell phone store that's going to go into the space where Frogs and Fairies was. Uh, so they've got a new tenant out there as well. Um, and marketing, the City of Urbana has issued a new quick reference and resource guide um, that's available at City Hall and also on the website. Um, at, for the market at the square, Natalie Kenny Marquez, our market director, uh, was just elected the new vice president of the Illinois Farmers Market Association. Wow. So we're really excited to have her representing the Urbana market and markets across the state of Illinois. Um, patron attendance of the market remains strong this year. And uh, public art, you may have noticed the new sculpture out in front of Cinema Gallery. It's called Whirlwind in, is in Thorn Tree by Skip Wiltis. And I, there are still more sculptures coming in this wave, so keep your eyes peeled. Has everybody seen the one over by the, the public library already? It's a good one to get up close to and take a look at. Um, the Urbana Public Arts Program also received their fifth consecutive grant from the Illinois Arts Council this year, so this is a real accomplishment that our program continues to receive consistent funding and actually a little bit more than last year. And lastly, Miles Thomas um, is our new economic development intern. He is a master's student in the urban planning program at UIUC and we're very fortunate to have him on board. Are there any questions? No questions for Brandon? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other reports of officers? Libby Tyler, Community Development Director. <laughs> um, I just wanted to bring to your attention that um, we've received a second year funding for the Emergency Solutions Grant Program, and those agreements are later on in the agenda. And that second year funding is in the amount of $47,072. And I wanted to um, thank Kelly Murkowski and her staff for that. All right, thank you, Libby. All right, um, if there are no other reports of officers, we'll move on to new business. Oh, there is one? Okay, Fire Chief Nightlinger. Okay, I just want to let everybody know we're in the middle of National Fire Prevention Week. And um, if you get over to Lincoln Square Mall, the festivities are happening from about 8.30 to 11 every day. We had about 150 kids go through our nine stations today from um, smoke detector stations to stop, drop, and roll to um, you feel things and you decide whether they're hot or not. And so um, the guys are having fun with that. Tomorrow we're expecting well over 200 kids. Um, Thursday is our family night, 
So the guys will be out working with the kids in the morning and will return in the evening at 5.30. Um, we've got some local vendors that are bringing some pizza and some soda. And again, they'll have some stations set up for the kids so the kids can show their parents what they've been doing all week. Mm -hmm. And at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a burn sale in the parking lot. And uh, it's going to be um, sponsored by a local company. And um, um, it'll demonstrate how fast a fire burns and how quick a smoke detector will let you know that the fire is there. And it kind of goes with the theme of the National Fire Prevention Week, which is check your smoke detectors. So a um, lot going on over to Mall this week. So if you get a chance, stop over. Okay. Thank you very much. New business, ordinance number 2014-10-091, an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow the establishment of a construction and demolition debris recycling center in the IN2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District at 910 West Saline Court. Good evening. Um, so tonight we are uh, bringing to you actually uh, two, uh, two cases from the uh, two plan cases um, that are <coughs> related special use permit requests. Um, so we wanted them to be considered together uh, since they're so closely related. Um, so the requests, um, one is for Southwind RAS LLC uh, for a modification to an existing special use permit that they were granted uh, in December of 2013 in plan case 2216SU13. Um, the second request is for Henson Disposal Incorporated uh, to establish a new construction and demolition uh, recycling facility. So as I mentioned, um, just last year, uh, Southwind was granted a special use permit. I mean, it was uh, approved uh, along with a conditional use permit to allow two principal uses at the site on 910 West Saline Court. And this was done so that um, in the future when Henson Disposal uh, was coming to apply for their own special use permit on that same site, uh, both uses would be um, allowed um, for the two uh, construction waste uh, recycling facilities. Um, so now in the new uh, plan case 2241 SU14, uh, Southwind is just requesting a modification to the site plan that was approved in the previous case. Um, and then Henson Disposal is applying for a special use permit for their construction and demoli uh, demolition debris recycling facility. Um, and a special use permit is required um, at this site in the IN2 district. Um, so just a little background um, and uh, discussing the land uses and such. Um, if you look at Exhibit A, which I can pull up here on this, um, the site's located in the northwestern part of the city, and it's, a, it's the heavy industrial area um, off of North Lincoln. Um, so you can see Exhibit A. Um, you see the two sites. The northern site is 1000 Saline Court. The southern site is 910. Um, and Southwind would be on the north site, and Henson would be on the southern site. So the surrounding land uses, you see there's some vacancies, but there's also heavy industrial uses to the west, some agricultural uses uh, to the north and to the east. Um, and the, really the character, when you look at the zoning and, and at the comprehensive plan, it's designed as a heavy, heavy industrial area to be used uh, as such uh, for the far foreseeable future. Um, now the proposed site, as I mentioned, for, uh, for Southwind, the northern part of the site would be the uh, Asphalt Shingle Recycling Center, which has already been approved in that previous plan case. And as I mentioned um, tonight, the applicant is just requesting approval for modifications to the site plan. Um, that was approved in that previous case. If you look to exhibit um, F, specifically sheets C3A and um, C3B, um, you see that really I highlighted the, uh, the proposed changes to the site plan. So on the approved site plan, both the entrance um, and the scales uh, were 
on the southern part of the site, which is in the which is on the left side um, of this um, of this drawing. Uh, and you can see the approved site plan um, in Exhibit G, which is the last page of your council memo. So you see it was on the south side, and basically they're just shifting the entrance and the scales to the north, um, which would probably give better access to both sites um, as trucks need to come in and circulate around. So the proposed use of the Henson Disposal Site would be a recycling facility um, that recycles general construction and demolition debris. Um, and the applicants are on hand to answer really any questions I think you would have pertaining to the, the actual use on the site. Um, so I won't go into too much about it, but um, basically there would be a 40,000 square foot building that would be quite similar to the uh, Republic Services Waste Transfer Building that's operating right across the street. Um, so trucks would enter the site, they'd go to the scales, and then they'd um, pull pull around and back into the building, dump the debris, and then at at uh, some future point that would be um, sorted uh, and then processed. Um, I know the applicant is expecting that sorting on this site might not take place for the first couple of years, so it might be three years down the line before um, they would actually be doing the sorting on site. Um, and the applicant can explain more about that if you need. Um, so uh, somewhat complicating factor in this case, um, just from a um, from a standpoint of of when to apply for permits and such for Henson disposal, um, is that they had planned on pursuing a local siting permit from the Illinois EPA. Um, and then there was House Bill 4606, uh, which was a bill that would that would exempt construction and demolition uh, recycling uh, facilities from the local siting permit process. Now that that bill passed um, up until it went to the governor, and the governor made an mandatory veto um, and said that so. So basically right now this bill is just in limbo. And Henson Disposal, to make a long story short, is applying for special use permits um, so that they could start operations if that bill becomes law. If it doesn't become law, it's going to take a little longer for them to start operations. But if they can get a special use permit now, they'd be able to get the other EPA permits that they need in order to start operating in the middle of next year. And I can, um, if you have more, <laughs> if you have questions about about the um, the EPA permitting process, um, the attorney uh, Rich Gerard is is here for the applicant, and he can probably answer those questions a lot better than I can. Um, now, as to the requirements for a special use permit, there are three, um, and they we believe that both of these cases meet uh, meet the special use requirements. Um, just briefly, those requirements are that the proposed use is conducive to the public convenience at that location. As I said, it's an industrial zone. It's uh, designed to be industrial going forward, so we feel that it meets that. Um, that the use is designed, located, and proposed to be operated so that it will not be unreasonably injurious or detrimental to the district in which it shall be located or otherwise injurious to the public welfare. Uh, we feel that it meet that both cases meet that. Um, that condition. And the third is that the proposed use conforms to the applicable regulations and standards of and preserves the essential character of the district in which it shall be located. And we feel that it meets or that both cases meet the, that requirement as well. Um, so the City Council tonight um, has uh, the following options regarding these cases. Um, for both cases, you could either approve the special use permits without any conditions, you could approve special use permits with conditions, or you could deny the special use permits. The, the Plan Commission um, on September 18th uh, recommended uh, approval to the City Council uh, by a unanimous vote of six to zero subject to conditions. I mean, I'll just read these briefly. So for the Henson Disposal case, 2240SU14, um, that the development shall be constructed in general conformance with the attached site plan. 
uh, that a landscape plan is submitted that conforms with our zoning ordinance standards. Um, that Henson disposal obtains a local siting permit from the Illinois EPA if that is required uh, by law prior to development of the site. Um, fourth is that Henson disposal obtains all other required Illinois EPA permits prior to development of the site. And for plan case 2241 SU14, the Southwind site, um, the conditions would be that the development is constructed in general conformance with the attached site plan and that they provide an updated landscape plan um, to reflect the changes in the attached site plan. So I'm here to answer questions. As I said, the applicants are here as well, um, and they can come up after me. I think we have a question from Charlie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, Kevin, uh, I think the, the memo is very well written, and, and the plan commission uh, notes were very helpful. Um, just a couple minor things. The, the, you showed the property as a, uh, compared to the city limit, and there's a little tiny piece of the north part of the property that sticks into the county. Uh, what happens to that? Mm -hmm. See that little part there? That does the, I think the red is the city line, isn't it? Or is um, that some other? Yeah, let me take a look. I don't think that's part of the. Oh, that, okay. I'm not sure if that's, no, that, that is part of the site. Um, it's a good question. I haven't noticed, actually. I don't think anybody's brought that up yet. Or, you know, does the red line correspond to the city limits, or is that, uh, is, I mean, that's the, that north-south line. I think Bill Gray can answer that question. Yeah. Director of Public Works. The chair is collapsing on its own here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the, the, the trick, the trick chair, the trick we'll chair. Fix this chair. Um, <coughs> City Council approved about a year ago um, a future right-of-way acquisition for Lincoln Avenue from the owner of this property, and that piece in question um, is actually uh, where the right-of-way will start curving on Lincoln Avenue. So the property is owned by the um, MACC uh, group, but everything east of that red line is what we're purchasing. So. Uh, with respect to it not being in the county or city, I can't answer that right at the moment, but um, okay. that's the so, reason for oh, okay. the little um, curvature, if you will. Gotcha. Um, so everything south of there and to the east is part of the Lincoln Avenue right away. Okay, got it. Okay. So that'll be part of the city regardless then. Okay. Right. Uh, then is is this property in, in the metro zone that we... The North, North Metro Zone that we share with Champaign, or is this a property on its own? Um, I'm not familiar with what you're talking about, so probably because I'm so new still. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay, I'm learning. Libby Tyler. I don't have a um, <clears throat> much better answer. I think it probably is but we need to check the map to verify. Okay. And then so the follow-up to that is, is, is <coughs> so this is probably in, I think, if I, uh, there was another map overlay in here, and this is probably in the Champaign School District. Um, and I, I think we were gonna ask property owners to see if they could move uh, to sh or the Urbana School District if possible. I think we had that discussion at one point. I don't know if, how complicated that is. Uh, yeah, I think when this property was initially annexed, there was that request made, but it takes a lot more than asking. Um, a property owner alone doesn't have standing to force a change like that, especially if there are no school children. Um, but the owners in this area have complied with our request, done the most they can, but that is not enough to have the School Board of Education make a redistricting change. That's, that's a very serious endeavor, and um, that's as far as we've taken it. Okay, and then a question for the owners is, uh, um, I don't know what the status is at the state level. Is the state requiring the construction and demolition debris be recycled, or 
uh, we haven't reached that point yet. Like the, you know, your yard waste can't be disposed of in a landfill. Are they, have, have we reached the point where, where the state is considering requiring that or, or prohibiting, you know, this kind of material from going to a landfill? Um, yeah, I don't know. Good evening, everyone. Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Rich Gerard. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of cold. And I represent both petitioners, both RAS, uh, Southwind RAS, and also Henson Disposal. Uh, the question as to RAS, actually, uh, the recycled asphalt material that has been approved for use now by IDOT and by the Tollway Authority and most of the counties and the city of Chicago. And the state actually, as my understanding, passed some legislation last year that has some requirements that if there is a recycling facility available for an asphalt recycling, then they're to take it to that facility. If it's not available, then they can take it to a landfill. But one more, what's maybe more problematic when we appeared before the Planning Commission, uh, one of the Planning Commission members here was an architect, and he indicated that some of his clients are having a problem because for LEED certification, you can get the lower LEED certification based on transportation and some issues. But if you really want the higher LEED qualifications, you have to dispose of that construction and debris in a recyclable manner. And there aren't any facilities here so you would have to go to another city to take it, and the expense can be prohibitive and actually prohibit the people from being able to get those type of certifications. So I think one of the most important things here, there's a real need for both of these products and materials here. They're both green technologies. They recycle the materials, don't stay on the site. They're all sorted, recycled, and then removed in various ways. And, I don't want to take more of your time. I'd be happy to explain in uh, probably great more detail than you'd ever want. Yeah, I, I, my, my issue was, okay, so the state is helping us, you know, sort of helping this along, which is really good, and, and then the lead requirements are helping. I, I, I sort of was wondering, you know, at what point, you know, we, we have pretty active recycling programs in Urbana, for both multifamily and, and, uh, and single family, and um, it's not required that you participate, but um, keeping stuff out of landfills is fairly important when such facility is available and I just wonder if there's a legislative um, piece coming from the state that would mandate like with the with the shingles uh, that construction demolition debris also uh, be recycled when possible there's discussion of it as you can well imagine it can be controversial but you know part of the problem in requiring it is that there aren't the facilities yet that you know he, that we're trying to develop and uh, Mr. Kirk from Henson is here and also our engineers um, Pat Moon is here from Farnsworth Group to answer any questions but you're completely right and I mean it, it's something that's encouraged and people are trying to do but um, we're still getting trying to get the facilities in place. Okay we have a question from Bill Brown. Um, yeah one for Kevin I think. Um, the, I know there's a regional detention pond there, and was that platted at the same time that whole area was platted, and is that supposed to absorb the runoff from the whole area if it was completely paved? Because this will result in quite a bit of extra pavement and impervious service. Well, there's what the capacity is of that pond. Um, I, I don't know what the capacity of the pond is, but I do know that at Plan Commission, uh, Scott Tess, our environmental sustainability coordinator, um, answered a, a very similar question, um, and he responded that um, that it should be sufficient uh, for you know to to hold all the runoff. Okay. Eric Jacobson. Has um, a question. What precisely do we wish the legislature to do with the amended bill? Do we wish them to pass the bill as amended, or do we wish them to resist? the governor's mandatory veto and try to override it. If, from Rich Gerard again, from our viewpoint, if they did either one, it would be fine. It we would, they would qualify under either bill. The bill that was passed mirrors a bill, Cook County and the Collar Counties can all operate without a siting permit under a, it's called a 2238, it's a section of the Illinois IPA without a siting. 
it, the downstate counties cannot. What this statute did was apply the same terms to the other counties that apply to the Collar counties and Cook County. And m the governor's amendatory veto, my understanding, would not affect us. We just needed either them to accept the amendatory veto or to override the veto. Um, but if they were to do neither, then we would have to start over again or we would have to come in for a citing request. Just a, just a procedural point. Uh, it'll be, e they can accept the governor's amendatory veto with a majority, but they would need a supermajority to override it. So I think the message that one wants to send is to accept the governor's amendatory veto. That's certainly what we would like to see, but you know, we don't control it. <laughs> well, no, oh, but you, you, can, you can make, make your wishes known. And, and, we and I will make your wishes known. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bill Brown has. Um, yeah, a couple questions for um, Rich or, or anyone else that can answer. Um, so if there won't be any sorting for the first couple years, what will actually go on there? Is it just a transfer station or will there be the pre-sorting go on? Uh, two things would, ha would happen. It, it would be the two uses, which is the asphalt recycling shingle to the north and the construction and demolition debris to the south are complementary uses. And the reason the first one is being amended is so that they can share the scales and share the entrance. And as part of the construction demolition, they would be bringing in shingles. Those shingles would now go and be processed with the shingle, which will be operational immediately. The other one, to some initial startup, will be a transfer station because Henson Disposal operates a facility in Bloomington. And until there's enough volume that has been generated to, to get this moving, because they're talking about building a 40,000 square foot building and that the operations will be inside, well, they need a certain amount of volume for that to be accomplished. So initially, they're proposing it to be transferred when that volume generates, and then they will be actually using the shingles on site. So it'll be a process that'll be developing. Okay, so it sounds like if you're depending on a transportation cost and your lead certification, you might not be able to actually count on the reduced transportation for a couple of years if it's gonna have to be transported to Bloomington anyway. Or will they, I don't know. Maybe I'm that's not something we'll have to look you are up. taking it to a recycling center and it will all be recycled. Okay. So I don't think it matters whether you brought it here or whether you brought it to Bloomington. It's the fact that it's being recycled, and there'll be a, and there's you know certifications that that's what in fact is happening to the materials. Um, do you know what the EPA, what just general types of things would be in the local siting permit? I'm just kind of wondering if we should be looking at if they aren't going to be doing that. Is that something we should kind of look at? There. Uh, yes, and it would, there's two different processes. One, and we can talk about what the process is, but if we're able to go under the 2238 section or program, the, the um, IEPA has a set of standards and tests and things that we, that we would comply with and as operations already comply with. And I can go into detail on those. If we had to do a siting, then there's a separate statutory procedure and it has nine criteria that are followed having to do, m many of them were things that you've heard in the Planning Commission or heard tonight about impact on surrounding areas, how their operations are handled. All these will require IP permits that specifically have to, um, they have to go through that process and it's fairly extensive with the different things we have, they have to do. And Mr. Henson can go through in detail for you if, you if you'd like us to do that, we're more than happy to. If he has a sighting, you're going to hear a lot more about it because we'll be back going through the entire process, proving it all up again. And um, you're going to hear it all again before anything happens. Okay, thanks. I don't know if I answered your question. If you want yeah, any I more, so. just let me know. No. Carol Emmons. Thank you. Thank you for the information. I just want to um, move ordinance number 2014-10091 uh, approval. Second. Okay, motion by Ammon, seconded by Madigan. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Ammons? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. That motion carries. 
I'll take the second one. Okay. I'd also like to approve, uh, uh, make a motion to approve ordinance number 2014-10-092, uh, the, approving the modifications to the existing special use permit. Second. Okay, motion by Ammons, seconded by Smythe, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. yes. All right. Um, any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Sammons? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. That motion carries. Um, may I ask Mr. for one more Eric point of information? Could you uh, repeat for me the bill number? <coughs> House Bill 4606. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Did you already call on you? Miss Ammons. Uh, I know um, Kelly is coming to give us the background on this, but I'd like to ask the committee's approval to take these four items in omnibus motion since the, the uh, memo is also written uh, all together. So I'd like to make a motion for omnibus on all four items. Second. Okay, motion by Am and second by Smythe. Sorry, Mr. Mannequin, he beat you to it. <laughs> okay. Um, would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Ammons? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Enthusiastically, yes. <laughs> Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. That motion carries. Thank you. Kelly? Okay, <clears throat> as previously noted, um, we have four resolutions approving an emergency solutions grant um, program subrecipient agreements between the city of Urbana and four agencies, Community Elements, Crisis Snowshery, Greater Community AIDS Project, and the Salvation Army. And the, the city submitted an application to the Illinois Department of Human Services on August 29th for the grant. And <coughs> we did it on behalf of the four agencies because they were unable to apply directly to DHS for funding as they did not meet the 25,000 or above threshold. So um, we then received notice on September 19th that the grant application had been approved and that a grant agreement with the city would be forthcoming. On September 26th, we then received notification um, from DHS that the grant agreement was available for signing and due to DHS by September 29th and some grantee agreements due by October 3rd. So. Um, DHS granted an extension to October 7th so that council could approve the subrecipient agreements as required. And we're recommending approval of the resolutions. So moved. Second. Motion by Smythe, seconded by Jacobson. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Sammons? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Smythe? That motion carries. Next, we have ordinance number 2014-10-093, an ordinance affirming the Urbana City Code Chapter 14, Section 14.7, regarding the schedule of fees, and this is for the annual rental property registration. And John Schneider is here to talk about that. Good evening. Good evening. This is basically what council requested at its 20, uh, meeting of September 22nd. Um, that in, in 2013, when council accepted the new uh, rental registration fees, um, there was a <coughs> clause in there that increases should expire in one year. Subsequently, in uh, May of uh, 2014, council approved a new schedule of fees and included these rental registration fees, which in essence, according to our legal staff, set aside that one year and this is just this um, ordinance is just to affirm council's wishes to um, continue with the rental registration fees that were enacted in October of last year. Charlie? Move approval of ordinance 2014-1093 an ordinance affirming the city of Urbana code chapter 14 section 14-7 regarding the schedule of fees for annual rental property registration. Second. Okay, motion by Smythe, seconded by Ammons. Any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? 
Ms. Sammons? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. That motion carries. Next we have appointments. I have staff appointments, finance director. We're going to rename that from comptroller. Apparently comptroller is kind of an outmoded title. I'm proposing Elizabeth Hannon. She would start on October 27th, so we'll have time to change the ordinances before that. And uh, Economic Development Manager, Brandon Boys, and Police Lieutenant, Joel Sanders. And Joel Sanders is in the back of the room. So moved. Second. Motion by Smythe, seconded by Ammons. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? It's unanimous. That motion carries. Thank you very Congratulations, much. Congratulations, guys. I think we have some very highly qualified people. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Appointments to boards and commission, library board, Jeffrey Bant, plan commission, Corey Buttry, and community development commission, Laura Carplus. Second. Motion by Smythe, seconded by Ammons. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank there you. being no further business, this meeting is adjourned.